Dr. Sage here, back with the last in our series of video lectures on aerobic cellular respiration. However, we're not talking about aerobic cellular respiration in this video. Instead, we're going to talk about fermentation. So in the last four lectures, we talked about how cells can use glucose in the presence of oxygen to break that glucose down to charge up about 32 ATP molecules. That's the process of aerobic cellular respiration. But what if something doesn't have oxygen? Well, then they can't use aerobic cellular respiration to make ATP, and they need ATP. Well, some organisms can use an alternative process called fermentation, which does not require oxygen. So the huge advantage of fermentation is it does not require oxygen. There is a disadvantage of fermentation. The disadvantage is, while well, aerobic cellular respiration gives you about 32 ATP for each molecule of glucose, fermentation only gives you 2 ATP for each molecule of glucose. So fermentation includes glycolysis, which you already learned about for aerobic cellular respiration, and a process to regenerate NAD+, the dead battery. Why? Because you need NAD+, to keep doing glycolysis over and over and over again. There's two types of fermentation, alcohol fermentation and lactic acid fermentation. So let's talk about alcohol fermentation to start. In alcohol fermentation, you take glucose and then you do the process of glycolysis to turn it into pyruvate. Along the way, you turn 2NAD plus into 2NADH and you charge up two net ATP molecules. Now that should sound very familiar because you learned about that process when you learned about aerobic cellular respiration. Okay, now for fermentation, fermentation only makes two ATP, that's it, per glucose molecule. That ATP is coming from glycolysis. So the only ATP that's made during fermentation is the ATP that's made during glycolysis. So if that's the case, then what's the point in doing the fermentation step? Like why bother doing that? The purpose of doing the fermentation step is to allow you to keep doing glycolysis over and over and over again. Turns out you cannot do glycolysis without this dead battery, NAD+. Well, once you do glycolysis, you take that dead battery, you turn it into this charged up battery, so you don't have this dead battery anymore. So you couldn't do glycolysis again. So what fermentation does is it takes that charged up battery, NADH, and it just drains it, like basically just throws away its energy so that it turns it back into NAD+, so you then have that NAD+, to be able to do glycolysis again. So the whole purpose of fermentation is to regenerate this dead battery. That's why we do fermentation. Now more formally, we wouldn't say it's to remake a dead battery. The way we would actually say it is the purpose of the fermentation step is to re-oxidize the electron carrier. Okay, or even more technically, what we would say is the purpose of fermentation is it oxidizes NADH in NAD plus by reducing, in the case of alcohol fermentation, acetaldehyde to ethanol. So you oxidize NADH and NAD plus by reducing ethanol. The reason you're doing that is so that you can have this NAD plus back so you can do glycolysis again to make two more ATP. So for alcohol fermentation, the input what you start with is glucose. The outputs what you get out are two ATP. That's the only energy you get out and that's made during glycolysis plus the waste products. The waste products are two molecules of carbon dioxide and two molecules of ethanol. Okay, so some examples of an organism that can do alcohol fermentation. Yeast can do alcohol fermentation. Okay, the reason yeast are doing alcohol fermentation is to make ATP. That's why they're doing it, because they need ATP. Yeast don't want carbon dioxide and ethanol. It's waste to the yeast. Just like to you, carbon dioxide is waste. You're breathing it out right now. You don't want it, you want to get rid of it. So these are waste products for the yeast. Now, some humans take advantage of this because this is where alcohol comes from. Ethanol is alcohol, so it's yeast waste. They don't want it, but some humans drink it. Okay, so that's alcohol fermentation. The other type of fermentation is lactic acid fermentation. 
Okay, with lactic acid fermentation, a lot of the concepts are the same. You start with one glucose, you do glycolysis to make pruvate, you get two net ATP. That's the only ATP that's made during lactic acid fermentation. The whole point of the fermentation step is to oxidize NADH into NAD+. So you have that NAD plus again to allow you to keep doing glycolysis to keep making two ATP per glucose. One difference between lactic acid fermentation and alcohol fermentation is the waste products. The waste products for lactic acid fermentation is lactate or lactic acid. Another difference is what type of organism can do this. Okay, an example of an organism to do this is you can do this. Okay, now. You can't live off lactic acid fermentation. Like you need oxygen to be able to live. You have to be able to do aerobic cellular respiration. But you can use this as like a supplement to get a little more energy. For example, let's say you go to the gym, you start working out. And as you're working out, one of the things you're gonna notice is you're gonna start breathing heavier, like breathing heavier and faster. The reason for that is because you're telling your muscles to do work, that work requires ATP. So you start breathing heavier to be able to take in more oxygen so you can do more aerobic cellular respiration and make more ATP to do the work you're telling your muscles to do. Well, let's say you really push yourself. Okay, at some point it will become physically impossible to breathe in enough oxygen to do all the work that you're telling your muscle cells to do. Okay, when that happens, what happens is your muscle cells start doing lactic acid fermentation. Why? To give you a little more ATP per glucose molecule. So you can try to do that work you're trying to tell your muscles to do. Now, the waste product of the lactic acid fermentation is lactate or lactic acid, which is an acid. It's a weak acid, but it's an acid. And that, that's one of the things that could cause that burning sensation in your muscles after a hard workout. Okay, because that lactic acid builds up and you have to clear the lactic acid from your muscles after the fact. Aerobic cellular respiration makes about 32 ATP per glucose, whereas fermentation makes only 2 ATP per glucose. Okay, so there's a huge disadvantage to fermentation, you get a lot less ATP. But there's an advantage, you don't need oxygen. Now there are different types of organisms that live on this planet. One type of an organism is called an obligate anaerobe. They cannot do aerobic cellular respiration. They can only do fermentation. Okay, so they do fermentation to make all of their ATP. And in fact, to them, a lot of times, oxygen is poisonous because oxygen is a highly reactive molecule. Then you have some organisms that can do either aerobic cellular respiration or fermentation. Okay, like yeast, for example. Yeast can do either aerobic cellular respiration or fermentation. If yeast have access to oxygen, then they will do aerobic cellular respiration. Why? Because it's better, you get a lot more ATP. If they don't have access to oxygen, they still need ATP to be able to live, so they'll start doing alcohol fermentation to make some ATP. Those organisms that can do either aerobic cellular respiration or fermentation are called facultative anaerobes. All right, so let's back up to the big, big picture. So no matter what type of organism you are, you're gonna start with glucose and you're gonna do glycolysis to make pyruvate. Then if you have access to oxygen, you're gonna go through and do aerobic cellular respiration using the mitochondria. That will give you about 32 ATP per molecule of glucose. However, if you don't have oxygen, then you'll go through and do fermentation to give you two ATP per molecule of glucose. Of note, fermentation does not use the mitochondria. Glycolysis and fermentation happen inside the cytoplasm. So you do either one or the other to make your ATP, depending on whether you can use oxygen or can't use oxygen. But let's back up even farther. Okay, I'm telling you, you are starting, whether you're doing fermentation or aerobic cellular respiration, you're starting with glucose. Well, where does that glucose come from? That comes from the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is something that plants can do. Plants, in really brief summary, take in the energy from sunlight and use that sunlight energy to build glucose. Okay, now the process of photosynthesis we're gonna learn about in the next set of video lectures. So, until then, this has been Dr. Sage.